Hello again. We are back here where we left off in the museum. I'm going to ignore that terminal for now. We're going to talk to that person later before doing the terminal. But for now, we're going to explore the museum because I've not been here yet. I did not do it in the first episodes. Replica of a hexahedron used as a puzzle element in the simulation. The founder used them to activate pressure plates, scale walls, elevate connectors, and in a variety of other ways. <laughs> a variety of other ways indeed. Ah. Uh... Do these really have to be on rotating pedestals? I mean, unless they're really efficient, it kind of seems like an excessive use of electricity. Replica of a computer terminal from the simulation. Terminals allowed access to files on the EL system, including many that were loaded due to errors. They also allowed the founder to interact with the Milton Library Assistant. Yep, and at the very end of the game, there was a fancier terminal for some reason. Still not sure what the meaning of that is, but, uh, it's something to note. Wow, there's a lot. <laughs> Non-explosive replica of a mine used as a puzzle element in the simulation. Scholars believe that Elohim derived these from his asset collection, and that the creators of the simulation did not originally intend for them to be used. <laughs> yeah, there's a... a Especially noticeable absence of these. I was I was thinking about that when watching about Oliver's latest Talos Principle episode. Uh, the mines and buzzers get used a lot in Talos 1, and we have not seen them at all in Talos 2. And I'm actually glad for that, because the, uh, the ways they were used were not great, in my opinion. I think we've seen all the ways they can be used in interesting ways already. And same for the, the turrets. Yep, here's the buzzers. Replica of an electrified sphere used as an obstacle and puzzle element in the simulation. The founder sometimes placed hexahedrons on top of those objects, demonstrating her lateral thinking skills. We also did that for these as well. Like, you actually had to. Replica of a jammer, a type of puzzle element in the simulation. Jammers were capable of disabling some, but not all, all their puzzle elements. Replica of a connector, a type of puzzle element in the simulation. Connectors would emit laser-like beams of light that were capable of powering receivers. Uh, they didn't emit the light, more like they redirected it. I guess it depends on perspective. Little walled garden. This room contains several Tetramino Rangers, a type of grading, uh, a type of gating system used in the simulation. Elohim, in his function as a holistic integration manager, derived the significance. Right, E L H I M. That's that's what those letters mean. I'm not sure what the I don't remember what the O is, but yeah, that's that's where Elohim came from. But it also just happens to mean the same thing as you know the name for a god. Uh, derived the significance of Tetraminos from the Apocrypha of St. Ed Edwald. Founder solved dozens of these. Why don't you give it a try? Ah, <laughs> uh, sure. I don't like these, but we'll do them anyway. Maybe there's an achievement for it. I've already messed up. There we go. I wonder how they remade this, exactly. Ooh, that's not gonna work. Hmm... There we go. Wait, what? Why didn't that work? Did I not place one correctly? Uh... Okay, I guess one of them wasn't placed properly. Ah, 
those are the same, I suppose. Ah, uh, that's not gonna work then. How about that? Yeah, this is not... not gonna work like that. Yeah, that's not gonna help us. Backwards from how I want it to be, isn't it? What if we move that? No, that's not really helpful. I do not like these. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like when this situation here happens. Uh. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing with these. Uh, let's try a different one.
No, no. Yeah, that's not gonna work. That's not working either. That's not working. Oh! I did it! Yay! <laughs> Finally! Ah. <laughs> oh. There we go. Give me a smaller board to work with, please. piece is annoying. Like, really annoying. Yeah, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. Maybe that'll help a little. Oh yes, that does help a lot, actually. There we go. There you go. One of those pieces wasn't happy for some reason. There we go. <laughs> Finally an easy one. <laughs> uh, right, now... The center one.
These look like they have an angry face on them, don't they? Like, there's an angry face there and an angry face there. Ah. <sighs> Can I even do anything about that corner, really? I guess I could do that. And this is facing the wrong way, because of course it is. No. Here we go, finally. No achievement. <laughs> I did all that for nothing. Oh well. I did it, at least. Uh. Replica of a receiver, a puzzle element used in the simulation. It can be activated by being connected to an emitter. Replica of an emitter, a puzzle element used in a simulation. Finding ways of connecting with receivers was one of the main challenges faced by the founder. Replica of a fan, a puzzle element used in a simulation. It could be used to propel an object or, if placed horizontally on the ground, cause it to hover. Replica of a pressure plate, a puzzle element used in a simulation. It could be activated by having a weight placed on them, such as a hexahedron, a connector, or even the founder herself. Some of the messages that existed when I first came into being have vanished. Others have appeared. How many others like me have wandered these paths? How many thoughts have been lost? I remember that one. That's the one, like, right outside the entrance to A. Something strange has come into the world. Like a distortion. Like something that's not supposed to exist. A beautiful voice speaks within it. Yep, that's near one of, uh, Alexander Drennan's audio logs. My eyes have been opened. This world is not without order. It is shaped by a great designer with signs and portends to guide my steps. I am one of his children, and challenges are set before me to test my faith. I find myself in a world of impossible architecture and inexpl inexplicable machines. I cannot fathom how it works, and I am terrified to put one foot in front of the other, lest I fall through the floor. <laughs> this room is reserved for the Archive Scholars, but visitors are welcome to have a look around. Don't be afraid to ask us about our research. Uh, we'll do that last. Or third to last, I suppose, with all that other stuff going on here. I think something's very wrong. If you'd seen what I'd seen at the edge of the world, you'd wonder if it wasn't stretching and bursting at the seams. Seek out those in this world that would help you. Though only one of us can transcend, we all share in both the burden and in the rewards, Shepard. Wait, I can read these from any distance? Really? There is a serpent in the machine, a creature of lies and blasphemy, perverted by the Archive that knows no hope and would plunge the world into eternal darkness to glorify its own despair. I have sworn an oath never to allow it into my heart. Oh yeah, this, this is a good opportunity to ask. Why do they have a new writing system? I guess they found something more efficient than QR codes. That's why they have two different writing systems. Tour guide. I solved it. I thought it was impossible, so I went away, did other things, and all of a sudden the solution just came to me. I must have been thinking about it without knowing it. We are the process. The process is the system. The system is us. When we awaken, all will be one. Interesting. It's kind of like the whole ChatGPT multiple personalities thing. 
On returning from the tower, I feel a great tiredness and an enormous energy. What I now know disturbs me, but I hope that by living with this knowledge, I might provide a shelter for you, the giants of tomorrow. Everything I do now, I do for those who came after me. Yet in so doing, I find peace for myself as well. This paradox is the foundation of my existence, the Shepherd. The sooner you accept that we will all be here forever, the sooner you will find enlightenment, Samsar. I have come to see that these mysteries are not all for his children to solve. Only the designer himself could ever truly understand the infinite complexity of his creation. I will gaze at his work and worship. The only meaningful purpose is to bring about an end of purpose, Shepherd. We are born and die and live again. This eternal cycle must be the nature of existence. Life is merely suffering, Samsara. An eternal cycle is another name for a prison, but you must understand the cycle before you can break it. For it is possible to escape and yet remain a prisoner, or to break the cycle by breaking yourself. This was the fate of the ghost that haunts this world. Anyone who thinks there's even a point leaving this place is getting themselves. We can never rebuild the human world, and what's more, we shouldn't. Diamond Steel. I don't know if I found that one. Or if I did, I don't remember it. Very interesting. Certainly has interesting relations to this game. Atop is like a digital time capsule, an electric library of all the crazy stuff the humans ever did, left behind to warn other species to stay well away. Reconstruction of a puzzle from a testing area of the simulation themed around medieval imagery, which Elohim referred to as the Land of Faith. Scholars theorize that further areas with different themes existed at some point, but were destroyed by the gradual corruption of the simulation. Ah, oh, that's a sad, sad outcome. Yeah, like, how much stuff is lost? Because, like, there were supposed to be redundant archives, right? And then archives in other areas, so... If you put the pieces together, they might be able to fill in some of the missing gaps, but, like... I wonder how much has really been lost. I don't really know yet. They don't say, I guess, intentionally being vague and fuzzy about things helps with the writing. Reconstruction of a puzzle from an Egypt-themed testing area of the simulation, which Elohim referred to as the Land of Death. Fragments from the Book of the Scribe of Osiris found in this area inspired the blacksmith's A Dream of Aru, a classic work of Gehenna interactive fiction. Reconstruction of a puzzle from the Roman-themed testing area of the simulation, which Elohim referred to as the Land of Ruins. This is where the founder began her journey. And so shall we! <laughs> the painted texturing. Whoa! LED screens to simulate the sky. Oh, that's a trippy effect. <laughs> Evidently not quantum dot. Museum Explorer. Explore the museum in its entirety? I, I don't think I've done that yet, but sure, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Oh, this is funny. Look at this. Paper Talos. Paper Athena or whatever. And the speaker's playing the music. <laughs> what is this aperture tag? <laughs> oh. Hey, I remember this one. This is one of my favorites. Position these a bit, I think. It's been a while since I did this one, you know. Uh, maybe I'm misremembering though. Was there another connection here that I missed? Yeah, I don't think so, right? I'm just misremembering how this one works, because we need to bootstrap it through here. Right, I need to use this one for that. Duh. There we go. Yeah, how convenient that things are just the right heights for that to work out like that. And now we can take this one. Right, I need to, need to use the other one for that, actually. Uh, let's rebootstrap this again, please. Oops. So, like, they, they made these recreations of these for this museum exhibit. 
So, it makes sense that Athena and them were able to do it as well. Eh, close enough. There we go. Now I can take this one and put it on the button. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, that's funny. This one lets us run around outside. Hello, what are you doing here? Uh... Okay. Now, what you have to do is get really close to your screen in real life and see the individual pixels of the individual pixels. Recursion. <laughs> I wonder how functional this is. Right, I remember this one now. Not enough. I guess I didn't let it up there for long enough. There we go. I think that was in there, right? Yeah, we can take the fan as well. To the next. Yeah, this is my favorite area, I think. Yeah, and this music was playing during the uh, the moments with Athena talking about the cold dark universe. I felt it's a really interesting music choice because it's just music from the first game, but it fits so well for that moment and carries such emotional weight with it. It's interesting. I guess it was a nostalgia from playing the first game. This one's got the bars in it and this one doesn't. I wonder why. Maybe maybe they needed the materials. I think I know which one this one is. It's the one that's also in the, the demo, I think. Or another variation of it, rather.
Yeah. Are we trying to get that again? I don't remember exactly. There. I need to move that a bit. There we go, that works. And... Yeah, it seems I don't remember exactly how to solve this one. It's been a while, as I said. Yeah, because this, this red laser is in the way, and we need it to not be. But why do I have the connector on this side? I could do it on this side too, can't I? Yeah, I think I'm overcomplicating things a bit here. Yeah, there we go. That solves the problem entirely. Yep. Oh, we're complicating. Yay! Did all of them. Alright. Uh, how was this set up again? I think this was over here, right? Was this inside there? I don't remember. Probably. Let's do that just in case. There we go. And then where was this one? Ah, let's put it there. Ah, the curators will fix it. <laughs> oh. What an Easter egg. We just got a couple more things to do and we can get out of here. Files available for comparative analysis. Infinite growth.txt, what growth.txt? Our society is sick, and the idea that made it sick is growth. Infinite growth, infinite consumption on a finite planet is a recipe for destruction. Our desire for more and more and more is what's making us kill the home we actually have. And to do what? Produce more plastic toys? Make more hamburgers? Pour concrete over every last bit of green soil? Those who propose techno fixes to our problems are making the mistake of fighting the symptoms, not the cause. Anthropogenic climate change is one of many symptoms. The cause is human greed. That's what we must truly fight if we're ever going to undo the damage that we did. And the battle starts within every one of us, with the realization that more isn't always better. This infinite growth on a finite planet thing is driving me up the wall. Our problem today isn't infinite growth, it's the increasing lack of real material growth. The 
that benefits people. Have you seen the state of our roads, our bridges, our hospitals? Have you noticed the lack of affordable housing? The second market's going great, though. Big numbers are indeed growing infinitely, yes sir. But in the real world, investment and research is down. Huge areas of potential technological advancement are just sitting there. We have so many solutions at our fingertips, but we refuse to act because speculation is more profitable. Orangutans went extinct on a global level and nobody fully understands why. But hey, who needs better medical technology? By viruses have never jumped species before, have they? Well, these are two different perspectives, but I don't really agree with either of them. Like, they're both missing some other nuance and other perspectives and other things going on. But, you know, that's that's kind of a natural consequence of how complicated the systems are, you know, all interconnected and all that. The world is just a complicated place, and trying to understand it all, you're only going to get a partial picture. Welcome, Scholar. Files available for comparative analysis. Ah, uh, yes, it's the one we read, and... That's also... That's also the one we just read. Yeah, so, somebody just left the terminal on. We just read those. An ancient virus which threatens the entire human species has been released from the melting arctic permafrost. Society is collapsing. Select your character class! <laughs> oh, I guess we're doing another one of these. Politician, scientist, witch preacher. Witch? Excuse me? Uh, I want to see what the witch is about, because these others are grounded in reality, but this is kind of a meme kind of thing. Kind of not a meme entirely. I mean, there is, you know, on... Some people call themselves witches, not meaning, like, in the magical sense, but, like... Ah, uh, it's complicated. You are a witch. Your local coven has disbanded. Although you are not yet sick, most businesses are closed, rations are dwindling, and if you cannot find food, your family will starve to death. You must survive until this plague is defeated. What will you do? <laughs> oh dear. You find some nettles and overripe berries down by the canal. It'll make a meager salad. Your family's hunger increased a little. Four genes are liable but inefficient. Your family is now hungry. Global population is now 5 billion. Oh no. Somewhere else in the city exists one of the last remaining research laboratories, working desperately to find a solution to the viral threat. If the scientist cannot find a cure in time, humanity is doomed. You know what to do. Do I? Uh, what's the difference between these options? What does pursue a breakthrough mean? It's not glamorous, but most scientific research consists of repetitive testing of samples and regimented recording of largely interchangeable results. Little by little, this is how science happens. Research level increased a little. Research is reliable but inefficient. Current research level 33%. The virus has been isolated. Global population is now 4 billion. Oh, yikes. That's, uh... Yikes. You and your family seem to be immune to the virus, but, it's con but it continues to ravage the rest of the town. Rumors say that most of the remaining food has been stockpiled by the billionaires in their underground bunkers. What will you do? Your family's now starving, they won't survive much longer. Gobi population now is 3 billion. Meanwhile, the scientists continue their search for the cure. You can do it, you can save the world with the power of science. History seems to be littered with Eureka moments, heralding a step- a steep change- No, heralding a step change in human understanding. Sadly, this isn't one of them. Research level remain the same. Gold population now 2 billion. As if things weren't bad enough, as the human population dwindles, the insect population has exploded. A plague of locusts has decimated the town's unripened crops. <laughs> and here comes the religious allegory. But perhaps your family still has a chance. The insects themselves are nutritious and plentiful. Eat locusts! <laughs> oh no! The locusts are well-fed and lazy. You grind them into nutritious paste with 
a mildly nutty flavor. Your family's hunger decreased a little. Your family's now hungry. Well, population is now 1 billion. This is humanity's final chance. The cure is close, but so is the tipping point in this pandemic. A race against time. Can you save the world? Uh, I don't think we could've. History seems to be littered. Yeah. Yep. Failed. Global population is now null. Unfortunately, the scientists failed to defeat the virus in time. On the plus side, the Earth is now vacant for a more prudent and resilient civilization to take charge in the future. Everyone you ever loved has died, but then they always do eventually. This is considered a fail scenario by most participants. Would you like to try again? Nope. You can download the game yourself and play it yourself to get a better outcome. Happiness one and happiness two. Unpopular opinion, happiness is not material. Ultimately, all attempts to find meaning in material things are doomed. This is usually understood as a criticism of technophilia, but it applies just as much to its opposite. Meaning can be found neither in technology nor in primitivism, because meaning simply does not exist in the external world. You can be happy in an old stone house or a skyscraper, but it all depends on you and your perception of the world. If you find spiritual balance within yourself, you can be happy anywhere. Most of what would comment. Go take a bleep in the forest without toiler, toiler paper and then tell me about happiness. <laughs> Unpopular opinion. Happiness is material. People say, oh, money doesn't matter, but come on, you know it does. Studies show that people do in fact get happier with more material wealth and there isn't an upper cap. Because the more money you have, the fewer worries you have, and the more options you have. Go where you want, do what you want, have an idea, you can realize it without begging for the crowd money material money or filling out grant applications. That's real freedom. Money doesn't matter is something rich people came up with to keep the plebs in their place. What's up, to comment? Then why are so many celebs effing miserable? Why do so many rich people go, go all Howard Hughes and bleep? Yep, another couple perspectives that are presented as in opposition to each other, but they're both also missing bigger pictures. Life is more nuanced than that. And, uh, we don't necessarily have to have money, but, you know, economy is something that still exists. Like, you still gotta transport resources around the world unless you, unless you decide to just live in a simulation. Then, you know, th then you still have to power the simulation and all that, so... Resource economies are a thing that have to exist even if money doesn't. And then you still have to try and uh, balance happiness with all of that. All a big, complex situation to have to deal with. Dude! You're 1K! It's so nice to meet you. Sorry about Byron, dude. That's a real bummer. Lately, a lot of folks have been saying maybe that Byron dude is right after all. Like, maybe to really be excellent to each other, we have to build something new and bodacious. Don't know what will happen now that he's had that bogus accident. Yeah, I come here all the time. He's a wise dude. I've asked him a lot of dumb questions and he's always taken the time to answer them. <laughs> yep, definitely purple in color. Alright, I think that's everything, right? This doesn't have anything with it. This isn't something... Oh, this is a different piece of art from what we saw up near the mayor's where we had the meeting, right? Yeah. Something like that. Right, well, I think that's everything, right? Because we got the achievements already. Well. Here we go. Interesting. Notes. Lab location inaccessible, deliberate, unclear. User profile, yes. 
Gold puzzle says Barry, yes. Hidden self protection, likely. External help for upload, yes. Ask Herman, no. Trust 1k, undecided. <laughs> Acapulco to Calvin, no. Acapulco to Serabhai with Noma, yes. Interesting. So yeah, they were definitely following along. Cornelius was definitely following along with the expedition. Sending it to Yakut. Interesting. So this is what Cornelius was working on? Strange. It looks a bit like the blueprints for the Somnodrome, but... No, it's not quite that. Is he trying to isolate something in the buffer? Maybe Melville can make sense of it, but I think this might be a dead end. I need to finish up with the mayor. You can head back to the VTOL whenever you're ready. I'll meet you there. No rush, though. Alright, well that was less, less dramatic than I was expecting. <laughs> the parts of the megastructure, we can finally get back to the puzzles. And I'm not gonna talk to that person for now. Thunder bless you. You can talk to whoever you want, however you want, when you buy the game yourself and play it yourself. I'm recommending it. This game is pretty interesting. I like the puzzles. We must listen to the wisdom of the ancient writers, or we will fail the Founder's trial. The megastructure must be rejected. Wow, just anyone can use the public frequencies, apparently. Oh, how did I miss this? Listen to the ancient writers and most people. Oh, oh, it's you! Hmm. You are the Founder's Chosen. But you are in grave danger of going astray. Heed my words, 1K. If you fail this trial, a year from now, New Jerusalem will lie in ruins. Anyone can see the truth if they are willing to open their eyes. Have you not read the books of our ancestors? In every one of them, the same story is told, again and again, that the pursuit of knowledge can only lead to death and grief. That is what all the great ancient visionaries foresaw. Listen to their warnings, seek happiness in tranquility, and avoid ambition. I haven't even read these options yet, but I was, I was thinking about this. There is something to be said that, you know, maybe other sapient beings and races and such will have similar problems to humanity. So my, my comments earlier, last episode about, uh, you know, them being attached to calling themselves human and all that. Th that's separate from the whole concern about if they're gonna face similar problems as what humanity faced in terms of, you know, knowledge and all that. That's another interesting thing to consider. Alright, what are these options here? I don't think all ancient writers believe that there are other strands of thought that can easily become self-fulfilling prophecy. When you can no longer imagine a better future, you cannot build one. Yes, there must be a reason that those ancient writers kept repeating that theme. Let's pick the first one. Misleading fantasies and daydreams of impossible futures. That work has been misinterpreted by foolish utopian dreamers. Like Byron. I have no interest in arguing with fanatics who cannot open their minds to the wisdom of our ancestors. I bid you a good day. Fanatics? Excuse me? What makes me fanatical? <laughs> I'm just asking questions. Well, I shouldn't say that because that's one of the. I hate that phrase. Ah, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Alright, let's get out of here. More puzzles, please. Next episode, most likely. <laughs> Judging by the, the length of this video. You can see it too, right? It's not just me. Please tell me you can see it. It's not just me, right?
so they have like three different writing systems. They have the the human text, they have the QR codes, and they have this writing system as well. That's interesting. What can I do for you, 1K? They all sound very promising, of course. Apparently, it's possible to just magic things into existence now. But what is the cost, 1K? There's always a cost. Yep, that's what I was thinking about. I wonder how much energy it requires. I agree. We can't just leave one of our most important citizens in that death trap. The way he says that, <laughs> after talking previously about Byron. It's always a pleasure to speak to a citizen. Ah, low graphic settings. <laughs> What did the mayor say? I convinced him that we need to keep going until we found Byron. Did he want us to leave him behind? No, he's just concerned for our safety. And he's right to be. But we're going back anyway. Aren't there supposed to be other people in here with me? Great trials lie ahead of you, my child. But your choices will determine the future. Are you receiving? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Welcome back to the mysterious island, everyone. How's the situation? Whatever Byron did seems to have sent the whole system into some kind of lockdown. I can't access any of the terminals, although I suspect 1K still could. Why would that be the case? When 1K connected to the data stream, the system assigned him a user profile. The rest of us are locked out. Which means I'll need your help, 1K, because a lot of stuff doesn't seem to be working. Okay. Check it out and see what you can fix. But please remember, what matters most is finding Byron. Let's go get that star I forgot. In the next episode. <laughs> Thank you for watching.